morning i'm rachel sweets williams and i'm the author of charlotte and the two pups which you probably have a copy already right okay all right well let's get started i'm just going to read it for you today charlotte and the two pups upsy daisy baby charlotte it's upsy daisy time time to get up baby bumpkin we're going on a line Mom says. Charlotte looks kind of sleepy, huh? Charlotte bathed, brushed her teeth, and decided what to wear. She put on her shoes and her dress, then it was time to do her hair. How do you think she felt about that? No, said baby Charlotte. I won't. It's not fair. Then up Charlotte flew, and before she knew, she saw a brush, a comb, and a spray bottle too. Charlotte huffed and she puffed and she stomped and she pouted. I do not want to do my hair, she shouted. Charlotte isn't pleased. Oh look baby Charlotte, is that a teddy bear? Charlotte smiled and hugged her teddy while mommy tried to do her hair. One puff done. She did it well. Mommy did it well, Charlotte wasn't looking, huh? Oh no, one puff done? That simply cannot be. So she wriggled and she twisted anything to break free. Then up Charlotte flew and before she knew she saw a brush, a comb and a spray bottle too. Charlotte huffed and she puffed and she stomped and she pouted. I do not want to do my hair, she shouted. Look Charlotte, is that a banana? Bananas are quite fun. I like to peel bananas, said Charlotte. Oh, look, two puffs down. Isn't that nice? Then Mummy put two flowers in Charlotte's new hairdo. I like my puffs, said Charlotte, while she smiled and twirled too. Charlotte's puffs were very pretty, complete with flowers too. Charlotte was ready to go out and about with her puffs and dress and shoes. See, it wasn't so bad, right? And she looks nice. Charlotte and her puffs had a grand time. Charlotte likes to line with mum. She went shopping, walking, swimming and flower picking. Oh, what fun! The day is done. It was lots of fun. Now Charlotte is home and tired. She pulls out her puffs and gives them a fluff. Her fro and her flowers she admired. Charlotte is very sleepy. It is time to say good night. She'll wear her puffs another day, but for now her fro is just right. Good night, baby Charlotte. The end. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye. Gary the Garbage Bin. This is Gary the Garbage Bin, and he takes his job very seriously. When classes are done and the students have gone home, he has a very important job to do keep the school clean. He does a superb job of ridding the school of garbage. He cleans the classroom and the corridors. He sweeps up bits of paper and pencil shavings. A little boy may have spilled his juice on the floor. Gary makes sure that it's been mopped. Or if a little girl has lost her crayons, you'd better believe Gary has put them away safely. Every night he cleans and every day the children make a mess. They drop their candy and snack wrappers on the floor. Gary decides to do something about it. I have to find a way to stop these kids from littering. At school, while Miss Boyce is teaching maths, Shamari pretends to be a basketballer. He shoots a ball of paper at the garbage bin in the back of the classroom. The paper bounces off Gary's lid 
and lands on the floor next to him. No one knows Gary can see and hear everything around him or what he does to keep the school tidy. So when that ball of paper comes rolling back, Shamari is very confused. Shamari sees Gary staring at him with a stern look on his face. He tries to show Jemaya and Samara who sit next to him, but they don't see a thing. At break time, the students leave the classroom to go to the park or to buy snacks. Shamari is the last to leave and Gary speaks to him as he walks by. Hey, I need to talk to you. Gary takes him to look outside. Look at the mess they're making. Shamari sees Kiron finish his drink, drop the bottle to the ground, and kick it like a football across the yard. I had no idea my schoolmates dirty the school like this. They sure do. If you kids are more responsible, some of you are going to be really sick. Why are you showing me? I can't make the entire school stop littering. Start with Kiron. I'm sure he doesn't want a dirty school either. Shamari decides to try. He speaks to his friend about making a mess. Soon, other classmates are listening to how they can do their part to keep the school clean. Kiron agrees and drops the bottle into the bin. At the end of break time, Miss Boyce calls her student to class. Shamari sits and takes a look back. Gary gives him a wink. He is glad Shamari is there to help keep the school clean. The end. Sentence City. On any other Saturday, Mark would be happy to lie in bed for a little while longer. After all, there's no school on Saturdays, so there's no reason to rush to get ready. Saturday is a day to unwind from the maths, science, and grammar. Ugh. Just thinking about school was enough for him to turn over and catch some more Z's. On any other Saturday, Mark would laze around, relax, and do as little as possible. But not today. Happy birthday! Mark's mom stuck her head through his bedroom door, as she exclaimed before entering, carrying a balloon with the words 10 years old printed on it. His dad, little brother, Sam, and even his dog, Dap, came in behind her, each carrying a present. Mark was already excited about his birthday and jumped around in his bed with excitement. He loved presents, especially toys, and could not wait to see what he got from his family. He was not disappointed. He got a toy truck from his dad and a remote-controlled helicopter from his mom. His little brother gave him a stick of gum, which he bought with his own money. Even that had a present to give, a bone covered in gift wrap and a bow. Thank you, Mark said gratefully. I love you. We love you too, Marky, replied his dad. There's one more present, his mom chimed in, from your grandmother. She handed him the gift. It was thick and had flat sides. Mark realized straight away that it was a book. Oh man, he said disappointedly. A dumb old book? He placed the book at the edge of the bed. Aren't you going to open it? His mother asked. Later, Mark replied. Sam, let's play with my truck. Later in the day, Mark went to his room to get his football. He searched for it and found it under his bed. When he came from under the bed, he accidentally knocked the present he got from his grandmother onto the floor. He picked it up to put it back when he noticed it was glowing. Curious to find out what was going on, he unwrapped the gift and found it was the book with a soft yellow leg. The name of the book was Center City. I Am Me, written by Samantha V. Williams. I am a girl. I am kind. I am smart. I am passionate about art. I am shy. I am fashionable. I am sharp. I am mostly brave, except when it's dark. I like music, hip-hop, reggae, soca. The beautiful sound of the steel pan makes me move all over. I love to bake and I like to cook too, but
but I always look to my mommy. I prefer her home cooking. Without a doubt, it's yummy. I like fast bikes. I like fast cars. They're thrilling pieces of art. I think my love for everything fast comes as no surprise. My dad is my Superman. He can fix anything that moves, and boy, can he drive. I begged my parents for a little brother, and though he's a pain at times, I wouldn't trade him for any other star in the sky. I am me, wonderfully made to be, just who the most high fashioned me to be. I may not be the best, but in everything I do, I always do my best and see things through. I am not perfect, I do make mistakes, but with each, I learn from their ache. I can do anything, I can be who I want to be. Determination and perseverance are key. When I grow up, maybe I'll be a teacher, a doctor or an artisan. I love animals, maybe I'll be a veterinarian. Hmm. But as an enthusiast of the sea, the obvious dream for me is to be a marine biologist. I can do it, just you wait and see. I am me. I can do all things, this I believe. So I will aim for the moon, shattering glass ceilings to land among the stars. I am me. I, I am beautiful, not for the color of my eyes, the texture of my hair, nor the pigment of my skin. I am beautiful for all things unseen. My beauty is deep within. And though some may criticize or downright hate, I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am me. I cannot be anyone else. It's useless to try. I can only be my best when I'm being I. Hi, everyone. I am Mary Cuffey, the author of Dara, Miss Me, and The Oil Down. Today, I will be reading for you excerpts from my book. Every day after school, Dara would walk by Miss May's breadfruit tree. The leaves were as wide as a canopy and the trunk was huge. But the most interesting thing about this tree was its fruit. Dara was fascinated by the fruit because it looked like a pale green football, complete with irregular polygon-shaped bumps. She would stop and stare at it, wondering what it would taste like and how she could get one. Hey, Earth to Dara, girl, what are you staring at so? Dara was insistent and mischievously tickled Dara. Dara pulled away and stumbled, almost losing her balance. But that did the trick and she snapped out of her trance. Now Miss May wore a blue head tie. Some say it was the high the scar she got from fighting the devil himself. Others say it's to cover her horns. Nobody knew for sure and nobody really wanted to get close enough to find out. The children were afraid of her. One afternoon while climbing a tree, Dara had a brilliant idea. Suddenly she sat up. Her eyes were wide and her smile was even wider. Let's go visit Miss May, she said. We'll give her sugar cake so she won't be mad at us. Are you crazy? Dala blurted out. She struggled to steady herself on the branch she was climbing. Dada just looked scared. He didn't want to go back there at all. But it's the only way, I tell you, came Dara's reply as she walked across one of the branches, arms stretched out wide as if she was on a tightrope. The children sat around a table and that had a bowl with three breadfruit. Dara spoke up. Miss May, are you as old as the breadfruit three? They all laughed. Dada, Dallas scolded. No, boy. You know how old the breadfruit tree is? Miss May sat down and removed the blue head tie, fanning herself with it. The children stared at Miss May's hair. 
it was parted into neat squares. The hair in each square was rolled into a knot. Dala heaved a sigh of relief when she realized there were no horns under the scarf. Miss May pretended not to see the children staring at her and continued her story. And when their visits ended, they left Miss May's house with tummy full and sang a song as they left. Vian Sale, Fig Epi Coco, Penwaka Ale, and Sonjaya. Salt meat, fig, and coconut, breadfruit going down in the pot, everything you need to make the oil down. Hello, everybody. My name is Diane Brown. I'm from Jamaica, and I'm going to read from my young adult novel, Island Princess in Brooklyn. Princess leaves Jamaica to go and live with her mother in Brooklyn. She's a young teenager, and at her new school, an assignment is given that the students should write about the, what they remember about the last school or place they were in. This is what Princess wrote. I thought of how it is to watch Jamaican athletes for an important national race at the Olympics. People gather together at each other's houses. While they are waiting for the race to begin, there is joking or walking up and down, like they're not worried or anxious. But everybody is really so nervous, they don't know what to do with themselves. Some people are holding on to each other. Some people are wringing their hands. Some people are hugging themselves. And then it is time for the race to start. The men having drinks put the glasses down. People are sitting forward in their seats as if they would jump into the TV. Some can't bear to sit. And just before the race is to start, plenty of people suddenly remember who they didn't think to call before. So cell phone comes out, cell phones come out and people say, you're watching, you're watching, you're watching? Just these two words over and over again into the cell phones. And you know, you just know that in the whole island, everybody is watching TV. In every valley, on every mountaintop, everybody is watching. In every village and town, uptown in big houses, and in the inner city areas, everybody is watching. In every bank, supermarket, and office, everybody is watching. Everything in Jamaica has stopped for a few minutes. Everybody is in one place, in one mind. Then the race starts, silence, nobody moves. Cousin Esther and I are holding hands, tight, tight. Granny has her hands on her head. Miss Annie, Granny's friend, has her hand on her heart, as if she has to do that to keep it in her body. Everybody is holding their breath. Slowly the one breath begins to let go as Jamaica is in the lead. Some people began, begin to scream softly and this becomes louder and louder. Run, run, we scream. People are jumping up and down. Then we win. Gold medal, one shout, shirt, one shout, starts in our house, in the neighbor's house, echoing all around and all around the whole island, breathes again, and the breath turns into a shout, gold medal. Granny says, thank you, Jesus, Lord. Miss Annie says, praises be to God. Esther and I are hugging up each other. Everybody is laughing and crying. Big men wipe their eyes and faces like they're perspiring and not crying. People who don't even like each other much are hugging up. And for that time, in that moment, we are truly one. And after that, for a little, we are quiet. And I know that we are praying for our athletes and giving thanks, even those who don't usually pray or give thanks. And again, we are one. I hope you enjoyed that reading from Island Princess in Brooklyn. Thank Hi. you. I am Rani Dukran, author of Breeze of Hope. And I'll be sharing with you a few pieces from my first book, Breeze of Hope. I hope you enjoy them. This first piece is called Make Magic. 
Let's make magic together, floating on the blue Caribbean sea, gazing at the gorgeous sunset, riding the waves to our destiny. Rum and coconut water certainly does it for me. With a dash of Angostura, actually we can make it three. We can run through the laden forest, sharing caresses all day long. But then we would miss the beauty, the natural flora and fauna. So let's make magic together, holding hands, consuming savory delights. Moments we will cherish always, from early in the morning to late in the night. This next piece is called Your Love. Give me your love, give me your time. I long to be near you in every word and every rhyme. Without you, I am hidden, but yearning to blossom. Bursting for sunlight, to dance in its brilliant rays. Your arms are my moon, while your gaze makes me feel secure. I'm catching dreams with you by my side, that much I know for sure. So give me a love always, as long as I'm alive. I will definitely make you proud, you will have no reason to hide. This next piece is called The Struggle. Have you experienced rejection in the highest form? Left on the street like a poor beggar by a man you once loved? A brilliant young woman, blessed with dreams from above. Never in a million years did she fathom this would happen to her. Her painful scars tell a story of a life, tarnished by deceit and oppression. She tried to reason for her sanity, but all she got was fiery darts of humiliation. All she ever wanted was to be accepted, but her identity never seemed to be good enough. Pigeons painted white, strutting about despising their own kind. Bombarded with insults, she had no choice but to grow tough. Pink nails, once soft and sweet, has grown into claws and clenching teeth. Acceptance, no longer request. Strength, no longer an apology. The road to recovery is winding and long but her faith in God keeps her strong. The Lord has given her strength and resilience, finally setting her free, no man's dominion. So thank you very much for tuning in this afternoon. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.